Hi there. I'd like to tell you some stories about the places I've been and the things I've done, the boats I've owned, the vans I've customized and loved, and the motorhomes I've lived in, boondocked with, cooked in, and fished from. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I'm not a big fan of those YouTube videos that just show driving down the road um, on the freeway. Uh, seems like quite a few of the videos I subscribe to do that. And I guess it's okay. It's better than not posting a video that day. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'm not a big fan of that, but I decided I'd do it once just to see how it looks on my iPad as a video camera. We're on a road called the Libramento, which is a kind of a bypass for Chapala, Mexico, as you're coming south from Guadalajara uh, to go to Ajijic or Ocotepec. It's uh, a little bit shorter than going through the city of Chapala. As we come over the hill here, if the resolution is good enough on my iPad camera, you'll be able to see the lake. And if you can see all the way across the lake to those white things, those are huge plastic covers over raspberry fields. Um, Driscoll Farms uh, imports raspberries to the United States from this area of Mexico. And uh, they can't ship them when they're too ripe. So if you go out to the fields, you can get a bucket of them for couple of dollars or 20 pesos which is exchange rate um, it's pretty good right now that'd be like a dollar twenty dollar thirty the mountains you see up there uh, are about eight thousand feet I've hiked to the top of those uh, I've lived down here 12, 13 years, so 10 years ago I was a hiker in the mountains. I don't do a lot of that anymore, partly because I've been there, done that, and the other part of it is I'm 10 years older. So the legs aren't exactly what they used to be 10 years ago. Although I shouldn't complain, I'm physically in very good shape. Hey, I got a story for you. You see that bear spot on the hill down there? There's a legend about that, a local legend. A guy took his sheep up there, this was many years ago, took his sheep up there to graze. And uh, a guy came over the mountains on a horse. Beautiful horse, beautiful saddle, expensive silver work in the bridle. And the guy said, you know, you're grazing your sheep on my property. I said, but it's okay. I just wanted you to know that you're my guest and I'm your host. And I'd like to invite you to come over the mountain to my hacienda. We're having a fiesta tonight. So the sheep herder did. And it was a wonderful fiesta, lots of food, mariachis. There was, uh, there were hundreds of people there. The ladies dressed in colorful dresses and the men in Mexican costumes with silver tips on the toes of their boots. 
and a good time was had by all. It got to be towards evening and the sheep herder found his host and said, thank you so much for the party, I have to get back to my sheep. And the host said, no, you should stay overnight. Um, your sheep will be just fine, it's my property, they're safe, they got something to graze on there, don't worry about your sheep, uh, you can tend to them in the morning. So, um, next morning he got up and again had a wonderful breakfast, there's still lots of people around, and he thanked his host and went back to gather his sheep, went back down the mountain to his village by the lake. And as he came into his village, people began to run away from him, like they were afraid of him. And he didn't understand this. And finally he found one very old woman who was willing to talk to him and tell him what's going on. And she said, Jose, you took your sheep up there on the mountains 25 years ago and we haven't seen you since. So I guess that's the Mexican version of Rip Van Winkle. This is uh, Ahihik and we have two uh, high seasons here for the gringo population. Uh, one is the snowbirds who come down from the northern latitudes of the United States and from Canada. And they come for the weather. It's beautiful here most of the time. We, we refer to it as eternal spring. Um, we're 5,200 feet up in the mountains, so we never get humidity and never gets really hot. And of course, it never gets really cold because of the tropical latitude. So, snowbirds, that's one season. The other season we have where traffic gets bad, um, the Sunbirds. The sunbirds come down from the hot regions of southern, the southern United States, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. They come down here because in the summertime it's really cool here. We who live here full time um, love the summers. It's the rainy season. It doesn't rain in the daytime because as soon as the sun comes up it burns off the clouds. Um, but we get those tropical rainstorms at night with huge big lightning storms and thunder and it's pretty dramatic. And it rains like, well, uh, I live most of my life in the United States. It rains like I never saw it rain before. And, and I lived in Portland, Oregon for 27 years, so I've seen some rain. I, I have a swimming pool here and it, it, it could fill up the swimming pool like three inches and run it over. Uh, over one night of raining. And then the next morning by 9 30, 10 o'clock, the sun comes out, a tropical sun burns off the clouds, and it's beautiful, and everything is clean and green. Anyway, we love the summertime here. Uh, the rains start in about mid June and go until end of August, um, sometimes middle of September. And then it doesn't rain again until June. So we have the sunbirds, the sunbirds that come down for the cool summers and the snowbirds who come down for the warm winters. And then there are those of us who used to be snowbirds or sunbirds. I was a rainbird coming from Oregon. And uh, we liked, like it so much that we stay here most of the time. Uh, my wife, Lynn, and I, we spend uh, a couple of months a year up in the United States. Um, as I've said before, I have an old motorhome up in South Dakota. And the Black Hills in South Dakota is a wonderful place to RV. 
and out into the uh, Missouri River, we go fishing for walleye pike. That's in late June. Um, I got some pictures of that, but I think I'll be doing it again this June, and I, I think that I'll wait until I can actually give you a video about those kinds of things. Um, that's one of my plans for the channel, is that a couple of months a year at least, and I'd like to do more of it. Um, we will actually be in the motorhome, and uh, there might even be a different motorhome in our future, depending on some other things that are going on, like uh, some property I'm trying to sell up in Oregon. Anyway, uh, I just thought I'd uh, try this driving along while I talk. I'm almost where I'm going, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Hey. If you like my stories, and you think you might like the next one, please subscribe, and hit the like button down there too. And always remember, in the words of Mark Twain, as paraphrased by my wife, Jerry never lets the facts get in the way of a good story.